Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today I'm going to show you how to take a basic project and transform it into something fantastic. All right, we are ready to start the funnest part of any project, and that is when you can start kind of embellishing things. So I'm going to show you some tricks that I use to um, take your project to another level. If we were doing a normal project with like a boo spelled out, this would be about where we would stop if it was just like a crafted project or a quick craft project. So I'm going to show you how to go to another level, and here we go. So what I love about stencils is they're reusable. And the reusable part of that doesn't just mean that it's reusable and you can paint another sign. They're reusable and you can put them back down over your art and use them as a mask. So now I'm going to use it as a screen or a mask to be able to highlight and shade um, the pieces that I've got on here so far. So we will position it, double check the top one, double check the bottom, always double, double, double check. Make sure that our tape is still sticky. And now what we're going to do is we are going to get out our palette. We're using Mylar as a reusable palette. Um, I just tape it down. Okay, and then what we're going to do next is we are going to highlight our letters. Okay, what I love about stencils is that you can easily add these details by using just dome brushes. You don't have to have a plethora of artist brushes and a whole lot of experience and talent. Um, that is such a benefit. So we're going to take our dry dome brush, our dry paint. This is number 52. Um, that is from our color paint chip charts. Okay. And that the 80 colors that we use here and they're, they're translated into deco art paints and um, Sherwin Williams paint in that, um, the handy little um, sample quartz that you can get. And then we put them into these honey bottles. We'll put a link down below for um, our affiliate store on Amazon. Okay, so we've got our paint. We've offloaded on our paper towel, which is what we do every time. And now we're going to just highlight the tops. Of, oh, hi, 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 hi. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fire in the hole. Okay, so that was like a lot. That's okay, though. If I made that mistake and I needed to remove it, I could just dip a corner of my paper towel in water and just go ahead and remove it. I think it's going to be fine but boy, could I tell it was wrong. Okay, so we just start at the top and I could just look at you and not even look at and see what I'm doing and I'm not gonna mess it up by not even looking. That's how easy this is. So I'm just going to make a graduated. Don't reload your brush and start in the middle because then it'll be that strong down here. You don't want that to happen. Okay, and I'm just looking at my image. So if you're painting this with us on YouTube, which you want to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified when we have new content, then you would just be looking at um, the thumbnail image or something like that. Okay, so I'm taking it about a quarter inch down. I had to reload my brush. I'm going to go back up to the top and make that a little bit stronger so I get a good fade. And then with no pressure whatsoever, I'm going to come down here and bring that color down just a little bit further. And I can go back up to the top and make it stronger. Now, let's peek at this, okay? I'm gonna hold my stencil down so I don't have to reposition. So look at how fun that is. Super nice highlight. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit stronger. Now, I'm gonna do some things on top as well. I'm gonna use some checks and some other things. So I don't need to get all the way there at one time. Um, the other thing that's really neat is I stencils are reusable, right? So I can do this step to everything. I can do my shading step. I can do my accent step. If I decide I still need a little bit more pop or pow, then what I can do is I can lay it right back on top and pick up where I left off. So you don't have to arrive all the way done. So I'm gonna make that just a little bit stronger, bring it down just a little bit further. And then let's take a look again. Yeah, nice. Okay, now we'll go on to our pumpkins. Isn't that a fun technique? And you can do the same technique when you're shading, and I will show you that in just a minute. Ooh, hi. That yellow just wants to leap right off of the top of that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep all my highlights to the top. So swirling is just such a friend. I'm gonna get that paint into the crack right there. Yep, 
if I were if I was not able to swirl and I had to um, and I had to stipple to get my yellow on there, I would not be able to do this shading technique. And I just realized where I learned the swirling technique. That has been puzzling me for years. I painted a pair with a teacher that came to my shop and taught, and she used not a stencil, but she used a dome type brush to do the swirling to continue shading out from the middle. So yay, finally know what, where that came from. Okay, a little mental epiphany happening right here. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of our orange color, which was our base. You don't need a lot of these colors. Um, it'll look like, oh, and that's number, see number nine and i'm going to mix number nine with number 17. i'm going to do about two measures to one measure find my offset palette knife when you start getting a bunch of colors on your palette paper or on your mylar palette um, we sell these on the website um when you start doing that if you have a flat mixing tool so some people like to use the back of their brush and you lay that down, you're gonna run your fingers through the paint, you're gonna run the whole brush through the paint, and you're gonna mix whatever's on your palette with everything else. So having an offset palette knife makes you feel a little bit more artistic and um, it makes it cleaner and easier to mix your colors. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for just a couple values darker, and value just means darker or lighter, okay? So when you ever say, value that is what you're referring to is just the darkness and lightness of the color get another brush now when we're doing our highlights we're going to do our highlights on the opposite corner of where we put our um our nope when we do our shading we're going to put our shading on the opposite corner from our highlights so i'll pick that paint up dry it off <clears throat> and then we'll bring that up Now, I'm personally not seeing much happening here. So I don't want to work really hard at this. So I'm going to get into a little bit of number 37 to see if we can't deepen that shadow color. About the same amount as I used of the number nine. Um, one thing when you're mixing colors that's really helpful to know is if if you think of paint like family and mama has a baby with papa, right? And you mix the two together, you're gonna have a cousin line down the road or you're gonna have a brother and sister line down the road and you know how you look like your brothers and sisters and that kind of thing. If you use the family of paint that you based in, then you will keep your cousins all in the family and that is how you make a nice little family tree of paint color. So um, that is when you're mixing colors, make sure you're keeping your family members in your mix so that it is consistent. Okay, we'll go here. Yeah, I can see that happening. Bring that up, deepen it. And peek. Oh yeah. Isn't that so much different? Just amazing. Okay, tape it down. Come on the other side. Look at how fast it is to be able to do this. No walking color on a floated brush. No skill needed. Like literally I could have an eight-year-old next to me doing this technique and it would be perfect. As long as that brush is offloaded, you're not gonna mess the thing up. So let's take a look at our pumpkin. Aha! Yes. Okay, so I got my brown done. I think I'm good there. Into the water. This is when you need a bunch of brushes. So if you know that you like the detail projects and you like to detail out your projects, order yourself new brushes or a couple more brush sets and then make sure you order them when we have them. Um, for a year and a half, two years, this is 2022, um, they have been impossible to get. So now we are going to go into Let's see, we, let's get our faces on there. Okay, we got this guy's little face. When you get your stencil, you wanna save these pieces 
and this guy here. And you can just use it like a little puzzle box to fit it together. Okay, I've got number 52 going to make our faces. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This one is a 3 eighths. Made a little mess here. And then we're going to, we're gonna stipple. Cause, oop, hi, we're gonna tape is what we're gonna do. Because we don't want our pumpkin faces sliding around on us. We're also going to layer through our pumpkin stencil or pumpkin pumpkin face stencil so we'll stipple these techniques when you do them will probably be like blow your hippie noodle kind of techniques because you will not believe how easy it is to make a really detailed project i mean and it's fast i just did all that shading and highlighting in like 10 minutes and like that's unheard of and it looked good I am going to save this and I'm going to move kind of back and forth into our top details because I need to let these dry so I'll move into the other technique. One of the techniques that I absolutely love is to put checkers on things to highlight them. And so I'm going to put a little bit of number 79. This is like a creamy antique white that is stuck in the bottle. Offset um, spatula or mixing blade. <laughs> Offset palette knife. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna use the big guy right here. And get another paper towel. This guy is a goner. Offload. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. And you notice that this is a darker color than this because um, I neutralized the paint in my brush. Okay, now we lay this over the top of our letters and we can stipple. That looks so darn cool. And then we can go into this guy and just graduate our stippling through the stencil. Look at how fun that is. Let's take a look. Ta-da, that is magic. Okay, and now we need to do our dark as well. So we'll get another brush. Get a, get a little theme going here, huh? Um, we're gonna go into straight 37. I feel like I'm gambling, straight 37. Okay, then we pick up our um, number 37 and we do the same exact thing don't you love using a stencil as a mask that is just a wonderful wonderful thing swirl um, and also using a stencil to do these techniques um, is magic because um, if i had to sit and base coat a bunch of little squares on my piece, I would lose my mind. So this is a wonderful, wonderful invention. Okay, let's get our eyeballs on there. Um, well, the eyeballs are on there. Let's shade our eyeballs. And I think, let's see, we've got, mm, I'm going to use the magic color. DecoArt makes this product called Media Fluid Acrylics, and they're an artist line of colors with no um, filler in them. So they're pure pigment paints. And they are magic because they're so pure. Um, a lot of times these um, uh, craft acrylics will have so many fillers in them so that they do base coat. You will never base coat with this. Don't, ever, don't even try. That's, they're in little bottles because it's almost like, um, like your vanilla for your baking. You only need a little bit. And so you have like a jar of your lemon extract and a jar of pineapple extract. You're just gonna use drops. And that's the same with this. So this is a seasoning, not your main dish. Okay, so we're going to go and get one of these wonderful skinny, um, they're a skinny dome brush. So they are curved this way. They are curved this way, but they're flat. So I'm going to get into that paint, wipe it off, 
And now we're gonna go with the base of her eye. I don't need to wipe off as much. Get over here into the corners. I can turn it skinny or flat, depending on how much control I need in an area. That looks really good. These just make the most magical windows if you need to show lights in a window. Now I can go back with this and deepen it at the base. And now let's take a little peeky poo. Ooh, wonderful. Love, 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 love. Okay, we'll do the same on here. Okay, so I want to just peek at this guy, make sure I like him, I like him, okay? And then we will take off our mask. And our other mask. And now we'll put the details on top of them. Want to pay attention to where our eyeballs are. Stay out of his mouth. Okay. So then into the water, into the water. Now we have one little problem. I have a face that isn't popping. So my eyes are not going like, hello. Um, so I'm going to get out a, one of those skinny flats and I'm going to get out my multi-masker. And then we are going to go underneath. Nope. I'm going to go under the eye and I'm going to have to move my, actually, I'm going to just get the second masker out. Give myself that little arch that's going on right there. Okay, and I'll hold those down. I'm going to go into the number 57. And I want this brush to be skinny, 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 skinny. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a pop. Let's see if that did it. Yeah, see how that's just giving us a good accent right there. Now we'll come on the side, do the same thing. So this is like Drop Shadow Junior, right? So now his eyeball is popping off of there better. We'll do the same thing over, whoops, same thing over here. Don't push too hard. This one's a little bit more flexible than your domes, so don't push hard or you'll make it fat. Okay, and then we go on the side. And then we're gonna repeat on the nose, repeat. I don't think the mouth needs it because it's down there in the dark, so we'll just do the eyes and the nose. And then we're going to do one last thing to make that pop. Yeah, his little nose looks so cute. So we're going to go into a little bit of black. And this one, what we're going to do here is we're going to take just a flat artist brush, okay? You want something in pretty good condition, so we're gonna pretend liner right here. So I'm gonna use my multi-masker and then I'm just gonna draw straight up and down. I'm just gonna draw a little bit of black right there, like eyeliner, and that did it. Perfect, so you don't have to have a bunch of brush control. I'm gonna do this here, shift it around. So this is how we line without brush control. I think that technique is worth the price of admission just right there. I think that is just super valuable. Make sure that you're leaving comments if it's something that you've learned on the video or something that if you have questions, we love to answer questions. And you guys, the questions that you ask are things that are so cool because it gives us like what we're going to like show you how to do next because we wanna answer questions in video, you know? So now we're gonna do the other guy and that'll be off camera. All right, I do think that I want to have black underneath the mouth. 
I can also, if I do have a little bit of brush control, I can just simply use my flat to run it along. If you don't have good hand control, use the masker and just use it as a, um, just a masking tool. This is just a really fast way. By using the flat on your chisel, you don't have to have quite as much control as with a liner brush. So um, that's just a good um, technique. And then when you wash these kinds of brushes, you don't just leave them in the water like I have, you know, this million of brushes that I've been using. Um, you want to rinse this out and then lay it to the side and then clean it later. And that's in our How to Wash Your Brushes video, which everybody should check out. Okay, and then we go on to this guy. Sometimes it's as easy as just setting your brush down. So you're really not working too hard on the mouth. Okay, I think that does make everything pop. Okay, and now I'll move my brushes aside and then just rinse out that black paint. Tap it out, I always reshape and lay off to the side. You wanna be careful with the Taclon brushes because they will get gnarly and just Distorted and they're not cheap brushes that the dome brushes are super affordable um, Not so much the others. Okay, so I want to do a couple more things while I've got the mask on I'm gonna get out our Teal color And that is number six Anybody want to play bingo? I'm gonna use the same dirty brush, but I'm gonna neutralize so what that means is I'm just gonna wipe it into my paint, see how that turned dark? And then wipe it again, it'll be brighter, and I'm gonna do one more, and that'll be the paint I use. So what I wanna do here is I've got some accents on the eyes. I'm just gonna dab them in. Okay, that just had such a cute little flavor to it. I'm going to add in a little bit of highlight coming on the tops of the light color. Because we are using our stencil as our mask, it just makes everything so much easier. So to make our crow more interesting, we're going to add a little bit of that accent color to him. Just on the top, like some moonshine or moon color, moon glow is shine them down and then we can't forget little mr spidey okay so you're gonna come here oh hi and you could just go right across his little legs one side of his body one side of his head just give him a little bit of an accent and then hi and then we'll bring it down onto our b as well you can be kind of arbitrary you just want to kiss a little bit of that color in a lot of places. You want to walk it down. When we do our greenery, we'll have that on there. When we do our little embellishments, we'll have it on there as well. Let's do the reveal and see what we see. Ah, that's so much fun. Okay, that's really good on there. Look at how easy that was to add that little bit of accent. If you were painting any kind of project with black lettering, um, you could go in with an accent color of orange or blue or whatever you want to do and you can just really make the letters just kind of come to life it's a really neat technique okay next we are going to go need to sprinkle around some um, spider webs and i have got a wonderful spider web stencil so we're going to get into black paint black paint is number 28 and we have Spider web in the middle, so I'm just gonna lay this in there how I like it. Stay out of my letter. Thankfully, our stencils are see through. They're also only seven mil, which is super important because when you are painting, if you have really thick stencils, they make your project look and feel really crafty and not very painterly. So um, I really, really think that 7.5 mil is the exact perfect amount of um, stencil. Okay, so I'm gonna go back on here, 
shouldn't have lifted it off. I should have left it on. I can do another technique. I'm gonna do that. Let's go over here. We're gonna use the same technique that we used with the flat brush um, to make little accents on those. I should have kept it on there though. Okay, so we wanna come here, line it up in the corner. You can make that as big as you want. And then I'm going to grab another dome brush and accent these before I lift it off. You can see both techniques. And then we lift and peek. Pull this down. I need a little bit more. And I could just stipple too. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and now we get some little highlights going on the web inside the bee. So then this is gonna be the same thing, touch down, touch down, touch down. And especially in your darker areas, it will help be able to see where the web is. And then we can do a couple of these cross ones. Yeah. And I honestly think it could use a little bit blackening up. So I will dry off my brush. Um, your brush can be wet, but it needs to be squeezed out of paint. So we can go on here and then just make him just high paint. A little bit stronger. Good, good, good. Rinse them out. And now we get to do the greenery. Okay, so you are done. And let's go into our greenery stencil. And he's got, there's some light etching, so it doesn't fall through. So you can position your stencil to exactly where it needs to be. This should overlap the banding. It should overlap the um, pumpkins. It should do like a lot of little overlappy things. And now we take our green, which was a mix of 43 and 51. I did equal amounts of each. To shove a little bit of my gold in there as well so I did about um, two parts of the green to a half part of the gold so just add a touch of that I just wanted to yellow it up a little bit and that gold was the 52 all right so we're gonna go into our green and we're going to stipple our leaves I'm stippling because I want a base coat and that will get that job done faster. All right, I've got my leaves base coated. That took about five minutes. Um, in my past life of painting by hand without stencils, each leaf would have taken probably 10 to 20 minutes to paint each solid leaf three or four times and get it straight in the edges in the corner. And um, super carpal tunnel-y, super um, kind of pain in the buddy, you know, so this is just so easy to do. And I wouldn't live without my stencils these days. Okay, I'm gonna blow dry this. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the pumpkins and the letter B, and I'm going to shade using my stencil as a mask. So I'm gonna use the number 51 by itself, and then I'm going to shade the base of the leaves Now, where we get a little bit different on the stem is we are going to use our multi-masker and we're gonna do the bases where it disappears on both ends. 
This is where I'm going to need the masker. So that's going to help it look like it tucks in around a corner. And then this one does a little twisty flippy thing here. So I'm going to use my brush to indicate that it did a twisty flippy thing. And that would come out if it's on top, it's going to be highlighted. And then I'll just deepen those one more time. Take a little peeky poo. Yeah. Okay, now we highlight. And I'm going to save this brush so that I can use it with my darker color that I'm going to be checking with. Okay, new brush. <clears throat> We're going to go into 54 all by itself. If I need to make this be family members, I might pick up just a touch of my base color and mix it in there with. So it's just like a number 54 plus a touch into that base color to make it family members and that way maybe this green might have a little bit more white or yellow and there's no white or yellow in our green and then that will make everybody have the same um, pool, gene pool. And then we start soft if we have a really big strong paint color difference. Start at the tips, repeat at the tips, kind of do round strokes, so I'm doing a round scumble instead of a straight across scumble. Okay, then this is going to get highlighted gently, and then I'm going to go back and give the highlight a highlight. Bring that all the way down so it looks like it's twisted. Now I'm going to go into only that color and not wipe off very much. Just give it a nice, strong little pow. Just like a little touchdown. Do the same on some of the leaf tips. That's what really gives you the depth. We have a base color, then we've shaded, then we've highlighted, then we highlighted the highlight. But when we do that, we have base, and then we have highlight, and then we have just a touch of the highlight of the highlight. So when we do that, we're building like a uh, depth and roundness, I guess, shape. Okay, let's take a little peek, see if I need some shadow on my shadows. And I think I do, I think I could use that. So let's give that just a little, use some black and then touch into that dark green, number 51. So I don't want it black, black, just in my corners. Don't go out away from how much shadow you had just at the base. Now we do our accents with our stencil brush. I'm going to use the number 54 and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this cream color which is number 22. Mix those together and just those on the tips and let's take a little peek okay that shows up nice okay. yeah. all right I am going to take a one of these guys that's flat I'm gonna wet it and I'm gonna try out a little bit I've got the media acrylic um, Viridian, I think. Hang on, glasses are good. Viridian and sap green. We'll see what if we like either one of those. So I'm going to go into, I'm just going to kind of blend it on over here. I'm going to go into this and kind of see it on my leaf. By having a wet brush, it kind of blends it out. Let's take a look. That looks really cool. I think we'll keep it. Okay. And then we'll go and smear some of that around. So we'll kind of take it coming out of the shadow into the highlight. 
of the leaf. Just adds a little bit of jazz. That looks so much richer. That looks so good. Okay, I'm thrilled with that. Okay, so we definitely want to add some of our teal color. So we're going to get into one of our skinny brushes. I really wish I had a bunch more out right now. Um, I have these little Mezzaluna brushes. This is a really tight little fine brush. I think I actually will use that one. Um, when they get bigger, they get a little floppy. When they're little like this, they're super stiff. So the bigger ones, I don't have as much time for. These guys, I like. So we're gonna go into our teal color, not wipe everything off, and then we are going to accent here and there. Just want it skinny so I can control the color. I don't want teal explosion. And lift, fabulous. I'm gonna reach into my leaves that were on the other one and I'm just gonna tickle, try to stay out of things. So this is where you stand back and you see what you think. Okay, see, do I need some more? Um, one thing that I do have on um, the pumpkins on my um, original project is I have a, um, a lot of black edging, which helps things pop. So I'm gonna go into my, that's not black, there's my black. And we had done our drop shadow over here, but I think I wanna do just a little bit, a little bit more. Tickle that in. This brush is not a brush that is in good condition. So it's splitting. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe show it that way. It is splitting and making a little channel. So it is not doing what I want it to do at all. So this is a problem with these kinds of brushes is once they are wrecked. Now you don't throw them away because they'll stipple flowers and do all kinds of cute other techniques. Um, when they get trashed. So I'll switch back to the other brush, which was in fabulous condition. Just give a little bit more accent to the edge of my pumpkin. And you don't, really neat secret is you don't actually have to line right up next to what you're painting. Um, you can be near it and it works out just fine. Okay, so that's that brush. I hope you guys are having so much fun. Make sure that you do subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified when we do other, other awesome projects. Let's get our fencing shaded and then we're gonna sprinkle some details in the background. Um, this is a really cool way to add just like some depth to your background, what we're about to do. So um, you're gonna wanna stick around to see that. And I need a shading color. So let's use number 82. And we'll use one of these little Mezzalunas because they're tiny and skinny. And I'm just going to bring a shading color up from the bottom. Maybe I'll mix it with a little of that brown. And then we'll get into our cross beam here, just a little bit. We don't want one white thing on our project. So if you have one white thing, you gotta tone it back a little bit so that you're not so highlighting. And this should be a field fence anyway. So you can just make it kind of grubby and old and gnarly. If you wanted to make a gnarly fence, let me show you how to make a gnarly fence. You can take into your dark brown and your black and you could just crack that fence and then just draw different lines down in and you could make like knots. So you could add all the detail that you wanted to if you like playing around with these kinds of brushes. So do a couple of those. You can put some nail heads if you want them. You could have that be 
broken board. Um, when you're putting details like this on, don't do everything the same distance. Make sure that you make some short, some long, that kind of thing. Make some knots. Now we're gonna take Stars and Crows Forever, and I like these stars better. So we're gonna take these stars, which is, um, it is Primitive Stars Pattern Stencils. You guys, if you don't know about our pattern stencils, um, we have so many different pattern stencils. I've got a collection, there, I got moved over here. So many, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them in all kinds of sizes. So if you need patterns and you like to multi um, mix media, that kind of thing, then these are for you. So now to make our background deeper, we're gonna take our black paint and you're gonna be like, whoa, you're gonna use black. But what we're gonna do is we're going to use control. So we'll put our star down and there's a couple ways. I'm gonna show you both ways. If I stipple it, it's going to be super strong, okay? And I might not want that, so I can just wipe that back, okay? But if I want just a touch, I'm just going to tickle it. And now I have something back there, but you don't know what. You kind of are guessing. It might be a little star. Not sure. It, it's not like the focal point. You could do a whole pattern thing up there. You could have so much fun just going for it. Okay, I like that. Looking to see if I forgot anything. I have another spider web on this one, but I don't think I want it on here. Although three would be a good number. It's good to keep things in odd numbers. So let's give us a little teeny bit of a spider web. Coming out from there. Darn, I put my brush in. I may be washing brushes for a hundred years. Okay, let's go here. Let's stipple so it'll actually show. And I don't want it too big. Let's take a peek. Okay, and we're definitely going to need some of our teal. So I'm going to just pick up teal, neutralize, pick up teal. Okay, yeah. Get a little bit more teal on here. Where are we at? Let's bring a little bit more teal down onto our pumpkin. Like it. We could scumble. A little bit on the edges. I like it. Okay, we're ready to paint our embellishments. So we're gonna make our stars are gonna be the gold color and our leaves are gonna be the green that we used. So I'll just use the green that I had and you just stipple straight up and down. Your fingers are gonna get messy. Stippling is such a great way to base coat. And then I'll bring you back for the gold, okay? Okay, here we go for the gold. I'm saving my green brush so I can highlight with it. I'm gonna go into the number 52 color and then I'm gonna go into my brown mix and then base coat with that mix of color. I'm kind of brush mixing it as I base it. Just a little bit of my orange, that's number nine. So orange, the yellow. This is when you kind of pick up your accent colors of your piece. Um, you, everybody's piece is gonna be different. Some people are gonna hate teak, the teal or the turquoise. Some people are gonna be like, yeah, bring it. And they're gonna be like teal and turquoise. You could do these in another color completely. Um, you could skip them all together. Um, we have a bunch of different kits on our website. Make sure you check that out. And we also have 6,000 something stencils. Um, we have a lot of stencils. So to do our accents on our leaves, we're gonna do it basically the same way that we did them on here. All 
All right, so I'm ready to do the accents on these two pieces here. We're gonna choose our brown color to do the highlight or the shadow. When in doubt, shadows should be at the bottom, but when you're building a fruit bowl, your shadow is gonna be where things overlap each other or where a ribbon turns and twists. Um, actually, if you look at here, how great that ribbon actually does look because we added the dark. It would have just looked like a band or a stripe if we didn't do the shadow, so it looks really good. And the highlight, actually. Wipe out my brush, pick up the yellow, maybe plus a little bit of that. Neutralize my brush. Every now and again, it's like, ah. Uh. I don't like using 85,000 brushes though, so I do like to reuse my brushes. Okay, and we're gonna go right on top of the stars. By putting them on top of a paper towel, they don't slide all over my table. Okay, so that is what the leaves look like and that is what the stars look like. To finish, what you can do is you can take, if you're gonna hang this outside, you can do a couple coats of polyurethane, um, Decoarts matte um, varnish, and it is a polyurethane matte color. You wanna shake your varnish so that it's not shiny. This is a project that would look completely horrible with shiny paint, uh, varnish on top of it because it is so rustic. So you definitely wanna keep in your matte line. And then you would just use a big um, oval glaze brush and then just put your varnish on. If you are gonna use it inside, then you would use um, a wax. Let me get that out. And I probably would go for the special dark wax. Um, you just use the sponge that we show in another video. Um, we'll link to that kind of thing, how to varnish, how to wax, all that. Um, and then you just go over the whole thing. You can do back and front and then hang it in your door and enjoy. Enjoy.